The popliteal sciatic nerve block is one of the most common blocks performed on the lower limb. It provides excellent coverage of the calf, foot, and ankle and is a solid member of the Plan A block team. The sciatic nerve originates from the lumbosacral plexus and travels down the posterior thigh deep to the hamstring muscles. As it enters the popliteal fossa several centimeters above the popliteal crease, it separates into its two principal branches, the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. The tibial nerve lies just superficial to the popliteal artery and vein in the fossa. The sciatic nerve and its two branches are covered by a tough membranous sheath that provides a mechanism for the nerve to glide back and forth as the knee and hip joints flex and extend. This has been called the paraneural sheath, or in some circles, the circumneural sheath. Note that it branches along with the nerve itself to mirror the anatomy. It's important to understand that the sheath is not part of the nerve like epineurium is. Here we see the larger tibial nerve and the smaller common peroneal nerve bounded by the paraneural sheath. Each nerve has its own individual epineurium, and so placing a needle within the sheath, but outside the two nerves themselves, say here, does not represent an intraneural injection. Now the paraneural sheath is a diffusion barrier, meaning that unlike the brachial plexus sheath, local doesn't travel all that well across it. If your local anesthetic is not within the sheath, you're going to experience a slow onset and a weak block. Conversely, local anesthetic put inside the sheath will ensure a dense, complete block. Finding the right location to perform the block is important to ensure both efficacy and to prevent injury to the nerves. Let's imagine the torso of this figure is our sciatic nerve and the legs are the two branches. The pants represent the paraneural sheath. If we image here, the nerves are so close they appear almost as one big nerve. It would be challenging to insert a needle into the paraneural sheath while avoiding impaling the nerve structures. Not a great spot to do the block. Conversely, this distal location finds both branches quite separate and each branch now has its own paraneural sheath. Local place between them would not diffuse well across a sheath and you'd end up with a slow, poor block. You wanna be here, right as the nerves are separating but before the sheath has split apart. This gives you a nice, safe, intra-sheath target to aim for. The popliteal sciatic block can be performed in several positions. We prefer lateral as it offers nice ergonomics. The probe is placed on the popliteal crease and slid proximally until you're happy with the image. The needle is then advanced in plane from the lateral aspect. Now, there are two kinds of people in this world, those that stand behind the patient and push with the probe, and those that stand in front of the patient and pull. Despite some vigorous debate between pushers and pullers, it's strictly personal preference. In trauma patients who can't roll on their side, we'll do this supine with the calf and ankle elevated on some blankets, just enough to get the probe underneath the popliteal fossa. Note that your image will look identical to the lateral approach. Here we see the typical sonogram when the probe is placed on the popliteal fossa. A good landmark to start with is the popliteal artery, which is most shallow right at the crease. Superficial to that is the vein, which is often compressed by the pressure of the probe. Above that, we see the tibial nerve, which looks like a chocolate chip cookie, hyperechoic matrix with the dark fascicular chips. At this location, the peroneal nerve may be separated by one to two centimeters, but in general can be found more lateral and superficial than the tibial nerve. Dynamic scanning is key to identifying both nerves. If you slide the probe proximally and distally along the back of the distal thigh, the nerves will appear to come together, then separate. This makes them easier to distinguish from the background. Now the goal is to choose a location where they're just starting to peel apart, leaving a small space in between for the needle. A needle is advanced in plane from the lateral aspect. Note that we're entering the screen from about two centimeters down. That's done so our trajectory won't run right through the peroneal nerve on the way to the target. Aiming the needle between the two nerves, pressure is applied to the paraneural sheath and the needle gradually advanced. Take care not to aim at either nerve. Sometimes the sheath will indent a lot before the needle passes into it. That's okay. A test injection shows flow outside the sheath. We're still not there. There's often a big give as the needle passes into the sheath. We then withdraw the needle tip until it appears to be between the nerves. This time our injection is good. We see the two nerves separating and the tibial nerve being carved out by the local anesthetic. We aim to put 20 to 30 mils in with one injection. No redirection is required. Occasionally, it appears like only one nerve is being surrounded by a local anesthetic. Don't worry. Remember the pants analogy. If you're inside the pants, the volume will backfill and then go down the other pant leg. After the injection's finished, I like to scan distally to confirm that there is indeed local filling both pant legs. 
This block provides complete anesthesia or analgesia to the bone, muscle, and skin of the calf, ankle, and foot, with the exception of the skin and small bony contribution at the medial ankle supplied by the saphenous nerve. We use this block routinely for major foot and ankle surgery, ankle fracture repair, bunionectomy, and occasionally for tibial fracture. It's an excellent option for below knee or transmetatarsal amputation too. If the surgery involves any portion of the medial malleolus or skin overlying it, we'll also supplement with the saphenous nerve block at the adductor canal. Here are some tips for popliteal sciatic nerve block. First, if the tibial and peroneal nerves are not well defined on the screen, dorsiflexing and plantar flexing the ankle usually makes the nerves appear to dance. This works well with both active and passive flexion, so the patient doesn't have to be cooperative to take advantage of this. There are times when the prone, out-of-plane approach is convenient. There are data to show that catheters don't get displaced as easily when they approach the sheath from this angle compared to the lateral approach. We start by getting that same image, and then a needle is brought out of plane. Just like an out of plane vascular puncture, you can quickly estimate the needle path by tissue deformation and safely aim for the point between the two nerves. While you won't see your needle all that well, you can use hydrolocation with saline to help stay safe as you advance. Lastly, the lateral popliteal sciatic block is one of the higher risk peripheral blocks we do from the perspective of nerve injury. This may be because the common peroneal nerve is not seen and accidentally contacted as a needle is advanced. We do know the common peroneal nerve typically comprises two to three large fascicles rather than a dozen or more smaller ones, which may predispose it to mechanical injury due to the relative lack of epineural cushioning. Nerve stimulation is a useful adjunct for this block that may give you an early warning of inadvertent needle nerve contact.